Hi everyone, my name is William and welcome back to the channel. This video is the final and third part of our ultimate guide to new launches in 2024. Now it was a really painful and long process. It took me from Christmas all the way to New Year to analyze research and put this together. So I really thank you for sticking with me till the end. If you would like a copy of the ultimate guide to new launches in 2024, click on the link in the description below and I'll be happy to send a PDF copy to you. A quick recap on how this guide works. I'll be ranking projects based on the tiered ranking system. This is a more streamlined analysis. I'll be looking at them more holistically, notwithstanding the price. The key factors that I'll consider when scoring a project are quality factors such as developers track record, facilities, and the size of a development, location factors such as proximity to the MRT, amenities, and 1KM to the good schools. Appreciation potential factors such as URA transformation, future government land sales, and existing resale performance. Lastly, exit strategy factors such as supply and demand in the area, who are the potential buyers, and more. To say that the CCR had a tumultuous 2023 would be an understatement. Now, if this region continues to underperform and the price gap to the RCR and OCR continues to narrow, I think that there will be sprouts of opportunities for investors to capture in 2024. Two themes come to mind when analyzing 2024 CCR new launches. The first theme I see is URA's push to rejuvenate aging areas. Introduced in 2019, the CBD Incentive Scheme and Strategic Development Incentive Scheme aims to incentivize developers to rejuvenate commercial buildings island-wide that are at least 20 years old from the date of their TOP. Owners who redevelop their properties will enjoy boost in plot ratio or 20 to 30% bonus gross floor area. The second theme which will negatively impact CCR performance is the doubling of foreigners' ABSD from 30 to 60% in 2023. This has effectively killed more than half of foreigners' demand and its impact is still trickling and working through the market. And one victim of the ABSD hike is the first and now list Newport Residences or the former Fuji Xerox Towers. It was previously set for launch in June 2023, right when the ABSD hike was announced. CDL has since delayed it for a second time and we are not sure when it will eventually be launched. This will be a 246 unit development just across the road from One Burnham a 99-year new launch that has sold 60% to date and an average price of $2,599 per square feet. What I really like about Newport is its unblocked sea views, proximity to MRTs, and facing the Greater Southern Waterfront transformation. Historically, the CBD does not have good local organic demand, evident from the poor resale performance of properties in the area. However, I think that Newport will be a standout performer in the longer run because it is the only freehold development of good size in the area. There are only two other freehold developments within 500 meters of Newport and they are both boutique developments. Hence, I'm cautiously optimistic of Newport and even with its higher price tag of over $3,300 per square feet, I think that this is a good choice for buyers who have a longer 5 to 10 year holding period. Newport gets a B plus rating from me. Just a few traffic lights away, we have Skywaters Residences or the former AXA Tower, developed by Perennial Holdings and Alibaba Group. This will consist of 215 residential units and will overtake Google Tower to be Singapore's taller skyscraper. Unfortunately, Apart from being very accessible as it is in a triangle of three MRTs, I don't see many things I like here. I think that it doesn't really set itself apart from all the other developments in the CBD and expect that the trend of poor resale performance will also apply to this. Hence, I rate this a C. Two junctions away, we have Marina View Residences. This is a good sized development with 683 units, but the developer is IOI Properties which don't have the best track record. IOI Properties is also the developer of our next door neighbor, Marina One Residences, and they seem really keen on having a foothold in this area, as they were the only bidder of this government land sales. 
This is also one of the only bright spots for Marina View, as they were the sole bidders and acquired the land for just $101 above the application bid for the reserve site. Whether the developers will pass on this lowland cost to consumers remains to be seen. And how the tables have turned, as Marina One residences attracted seven different bidders back then. I think that developers see that buyers are apprehensive of this area, which on a weekend feels like a deserted office space. The underperformance of Marina One residences hasn't helped as well. There are currently 17 profitable transactions and 20 unprofitable transactions, and prices seem to be on a downward trend. All in all, I give Marina View Residences a D because I think the next launch in our list will be the better option. Acquired for just $23 per square feet more, Kingsford has backed a plot which, in my opinion, is the one to shortlist if you are keen to ride the Marina South transformation. The Marina Gardens Lane GLS is situated next to Marina South MRT, and this will be a huge development spanning 790 units. It will also be the first mover in the 45 hectare Marina South Precinct, which is set to be transformed by the Marina Gardens Crescent Whiteside GLS just across the road. The tender for the white site will conclude soon on the 18th of January this year. While there are still some negatives such as the lack of primary schools and an unproven resale performance, I think that this land plot really sets itself apart from the rest. This is due to it being situated directly next to Gardens by the Bay. So imagine coming home facing unblocked views of Gardens by the Bay and Marina Bay Sands. This makes Marina Gardens Lane a rare and iconic development that might attract future Singaporean home buyers as well. Hence, I rate Marina Garden Lane's GLS an A. Moving away from the CBD, we have two old favorite haunts of Singaporeans which will be redeveloped this year. First up, we have One Sophia or the former Peace Center. I still remember back in my younger days when me and my buddies would spend a whole day there in the land center just gaming. So this is developed by Chip In Sing, Sing Hai Yi, and KSH. These are developers with a good track record and there will be 367 residential units. This makes it a standout as an investment and viable own state option because One Sophia will be the second largest development within a 500 meter radius after Sophia Hills which is the largest right now. One Sophia will be located in a triangle of three MRTs and most importantly, it falls within one camp of St. Margaret's, making this the only CCR new launch of 2024 that has a good primary school within one camp. So this will definitely also attract local families to move here. Hence, I rate One Sophia a rank A. Another favorite haunt that will get a makeover is Aurea or the former Golden Mile Complex. Developed by Perennial, Sino Land and Far East, this iconic conserve building will be sensitively restored with the developer's vision of retaining its key features and signature terrace profile. What I like about Aurea are its unblocked views of the Kalang Basin, proximity to Nikko Highway MRT, and upside potential might come from the land opposite us, which is slated as a reserve site in the URA master plan. This is also a good injection of supply into an area that has not seen a new development in a while. On the other hand, I'm slightly concerned about the small size of the development. With only 186 units, it is smaller than other resale in the area, such as Concourse, Skyline, and Citygate. In addition, the resale performance hasn't been the best as well. So in conclusion, I give Aurea a B rating. Moving on to Havelock Road, we have the Central Square redevelopment. CDL will redevelop Central Mall, Central Square, and the surrounding area into a large-scale, mixed-use lifestyle hub, reaching 45 storeys high. This follows CDL's wildly successful Canning Hill Piers just across the Singapore River, which is 97% sold to date, and an average price of $2,954 per square feet. While well, new launch buyers have been very receptive of these developments in the area, it is still unproven whether the resale demand will be present when they are finally completed. What we can assume is for CDL to deliver an equally visually stunning development, and I am cautiously optimistic about this area, so I rank Central Square Redevelopment a B. 
Lastly, we have the redevelopment of the former Far East Shopping Center. This was recently acquired in September 2023 by Chinese steel tycoon Du Shanghua through one of his entities called Bright Ruby Resources. Very little is known about how it will be redeveloped, but market watchers say that it will be likely repositioned into a commercial offering with retail, hospitality, offices, and residential units. Based on the purchase price, the cost works out to $3,350 per square foot PPR. Now, the development sits on a triple nine-year land, and due to the myriad of users the development can be used for, I really don't know where prices will end up for the residential units. For reference, the newest development across the road from us is the freehold property Tree Cascaden, which transacts at an average price of $3,924 per square feet. Now, Orchard properties have historically not performed well, and it is a market dominated by foreigners. So without much information now, I'll rank it a C, pending more information. And with that, we've finally completed all CCR properties in our The Ultimate Guide to New Launchers 2024. Let's do a quick recap on what we have covered so far. My top CCR picks will be the Marina Gardens Lane GLS, One Sophia, and potentially Newport Residences. With so many options out there, do you agree with my analysis and ranking? I would love to hear your views in the comment section down below. Once again, this is a generic analysis that might not apply to your particular situation. It is still going to be very overwhelming to compare all these developments objectively, and that is why I do what I do. If you are an interested buyer who likes numbers, data, and a systematic approach to your property planning, I'll create a customized game plan for you so as to achieve your property goals and objectives in 2024. To do so, you can contact me on WhatsApp or fill up the Google Form link which I've left in the description below. I'll also be happy to send you a copy of the Ultimate Guide to New Launches 2024 edition. And with that, I really thank you for sticking to the end. Do like this video and follow my channel for more videos. One of my resolutions in 2024 is to deliver even more videos, even more insights, and even more objective analysis to the viewers so that you can empower yourselves to make the right decisions in 2024. Thank you once again for the support, and I'll see you in the next video.